Went to the local thrift store and spotted this, and I was like, oh, that's cute. Looks like a toy. Of course, it's not a toy. It's a bug zapper. When I took it to the cashier, she goes, well, what's this toy do? And I go, no, it's not a toy. It's a bug zapper. What does this toy do? No, it's a bug zapper. It puts out a couple thousand volts. Oh. Well, let's see if I can get the reflection. There we go. 2,000 volts. This is not a toy. I'm going to be taking this apart, obviously, uh, and taking a look at the circuit. It's a model. N-B-Z-D. Uh -huh. Owl. Bug zapper. Ninja. Bug zapper. Uh, let's see if I can get it. Takes two C-cells. Alkaline. So it needs an input of 3 volts DC, 450 milliamps. Output, 2,000 volts DC at 2 milliamps. Power, 1.4 watts. Now, this treasure I found there has cost me a staggering $4.99. And I actually paid full price. I didn't wait till their uh, pink tag day where it's half off because I was pretty sure this wasn't going to last. So, let's see. First off... I've already put two uh, batteries in it. It works by projecting light in there, attracting the bugs. The bug flies in. Let's see if I can get this. Keep my fingers off the metal. Yes, it does look like it works. And that's got a very healthy spark on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'll disassemble it, take the batteries out, take it apart carefully, and uh, once I'm finished uh, doing up the schematic, I'll actually reassemble it. Everybody needs bug zappers in Canada. Come on. There we go. So, I'll just find a screwdriver, which is long enough to fit down here. Now, I'm going to assume this is actually still charged. Nope. It's not. It's not like that other bug zapper I came across, which uh, they saved a penny by eliminating the bleed resistor. And even though they had the holes in the circuit board for the bleed resistor, they didn't put it in. Now, that could have been a manufacturing issue. Uh, especially since they actually had... Oh, oh, there's another screw hole right there. Since they had the hole for the resistor, uh, and it was just lacking. One, two... Let's see who's not coming out that one. There we go. That's three of them and two over here. This screwdriver is actually pretty old. I'll show you the name on it in a moment. Uh, when I bought some uh, expensive equipment a long time ago, um, a line plotter, uh, before the days of uh, the inkjet type, Zeta plotters. That was an expensive piece of equipment. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Find the splitter, uh, which has wandered away again. Let's just use a screwdriver. Oh. Making nice crackly sounds. I've already made sure it was discharged. is going smoothly. Yeah, wonder what's wrong. Uh, 
I'm not so sure about the bug zappers just look like toys. But then the other ones are shaped like paddles, so that's not much better. But you do need them for a good swing. Okay. And now I'll zoom down on it. So you got these uh, thin wires here. They're heading off to the LEDs. I'll try to get a close-up later of those. And then you've got the main board here and the battery terminal terminals over here. Uh, one more little screw there. Oh, that one's in tight. That one's in really tight. Okay, let's see what we have on the board. There we go. Why does that look wet? Yeah, no, it's just glossy. Yeah, actually, I think it is wet. Yeah. Oh well. So there's the board. I'll adjust the camera, get a close up, and then I'll uh, create a schematic. So here's one side of it. And there's the other side. And they've got a nice little separation cut there between the low voltage and the high voltage, I would hope. So, now time to make the schematic. So here's the circuit. If it's a single-sided board, I just uh, kind of draw the top components and then uh, either uh, flip it over and figure out the traces or do that in combination with uh, a light underneath it and if you can see the traces great uh, sometimes there's a few little mistakes so then I cleaned it up a tiny bit and this is the result uh, this is the high voltage side and the other side let's just do the high voltage side first because this is going to be real quick uh, between five and six is the uh, secondary windings it was I believe 247 ish uh, ohms and it powers this circuit and it had this the bleeder resistor which was 22 meg but boy that looked familiar uh, this is another one I took apart a while ago uh, and it's hmm, almost it is identical. The only, well, almost identical. The only part that's different is some of the values. Uh, they've got some three kilovolt uh, capacitors in here. That other one had two kilovolt uh, capacitors. And then some 250 volt uh, capacitors here and here. And then for the biggie, this one here. Uh, it's a 0 0.022 microfarad, 2 kilovolt. So, that's it for this side. Oh, um, on here, the black wire coming out goes to the middle, and the two red wires go to the two outsides. Now, what's different on this one compared to previous ones, oops, get you in there, is that the previous one basically from about there is pretty well the same. You've got your feedback uh, part of the transformer uh, between pins uh, 1 and 2. It was a 1.6 ohms. You got your primary uh, 0 0.3 ohms roughly. Uh, 
between pins three and four. The main difference in here is all of this stuff. And I suspect this part in here is needed just to keep it, uh, well, I guess in a way stable or make sure it starts. Because on this, of course, you turn it on and you leave it on. Whereas a normal uh, uh, bug zapper, you uh, push the button, you swat the bug, and then you take your finger off the button and that's it. So the design is slightly different. Oh, this part in here, there were two wires coming out, uh, red, two black, and that was for the LEDs which went down to a 10 ohm resistor, uh, the LED, and then, don't ask me why, uh, but they have it on this side of the primary, and I have no idea. Unless they're trying to figure that as this oscillator is going, um, oscillating away, maybe it adds a bit of flicker, maybe bugs like flicker, I have no idea. But if you want to figure out more of the circuit, there it is. Uh, that's the first time I've seen an inductor on this side in there. Oh, the transistors they used were, uh, this is a PNP one. And these two are NPNs. And this one here was actually a D965. And this is why you always need to look up on the data sheets. Here's an S8050 NPN. Okay. Emitters in the same place. The base and the collector are reversed on this. Uh, so that's why you always take a look at the data sheets if you can. And if you can't, I think you can test that with your a diode detector on your um, meter. So that's just another bug zapper. And for anybody that's new in it, here's the color codes for the inductor. Uh, the numbers are the same, but okay. For the inductor, it was brown is one, white is nine, black is times one, gold is 5%. So this was 19 micro henrys. Uh, for the resistors, orange, orange, red, 3.3 three times 100, 3.3K, uh, 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 red, red, blue, so 2.2 two times 1 meg, that's your bleeder resistor. Uh, R3, which was down in here, was a brown, black, orange, so 1.0 times 1K, one 10K. K. And R4 over here feeding this LED that was built into the switch was uh, brown, black, red, so 1K. And that's about it. I will have to repair this now. I did break one wire off, but I'll put it back together. I might look at trying to uh, see what happens if you run this off a 5-volt uh, power bank later. See if it burn out the circuit, or at least that'd be a bit more economic than using uh, these things. Have a good day. Bye. I'm starting to ramble.